1964, United States Supreme Court Justice Porter Stewart was on the panel for Jacob Ellis versus Ohio. It was a First Amendment-inspired case centering around a 1958 film entitled The Lovers. The long and short of the case was that the film had a sex scene that was extremely graphic in nature and described by some as pornographic. Porter Stewart didn't think so, and he expressed his subjective opinion of hardcore pornography in a way that became something of a landmark. The case resulted in Justice Stewart's subjective definition of hardcore pornography when he said, quote, I shall not today attempt further to define the kinds of material I understand to be embraced within the shorthand description, which was hardcore pornography, and perhaps I could never succeed in intelligibly doing so. But I know it, he said, when I see it. The same could be said about a lot of things we encounter during our everyday lives. For example, is someone who is being an a-hole to a woman attractive, rude, or abusive? Obviously, that depends upon the context, the man, and the woman. But the very definition of rude is highly subjective. Here's another example. Which is better for your overall health, a plant-based diet or a ketogenic diet? Again, there are many factors at play, such as a person's goals. Do they want to lose fat or gain muscle? Do they want to improve athletic performance, physical strength, or achieve a highly aesthetically pleasing physique? The keto versus plant-based diet is highly subjective. But there's one question that we've all been faced with in our relationships with our significant others, and it's been debated for as long as any of us can remember. I'll get to that question in a minute, but I want to quickly remind you that if you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. You can also sign up for text notifications when I release videos just like this, so you'll never miss a live premiere again. Just text TSR to 474747. Standard messaging and data rates may apply. Okay, let's get back to that million dollar question. The question we have all been faced with that has both ended and started relationships is, what exactly is flirting? What constitutes as flirtatious behavior between two people? Now, according to Google, the definition of flirting is to behave as though attracted to or trying to attract someone, but for amusement rather than with serious intentions. And that last line, but for amusement rather than with serious intentions, is where the subjectivity creeps in, and I'll tell you why. When a man sees his wife or girlfriend engaging in what he believes is flirtatious behavior, something inside of him twinges. He doesn't like the behavior she's exhibiting because he sees her behaving as though she is attracted to someone and trying to attract him. The problem is that when he confronts his woman about it, she does one of two things. She either A, denies your accusation completely by telling you she was not flirting, or B, characterizes her behavior as just being friendly. Option B is where women create the margin to get away with behaviors that are conducive to infidelity. Now, option B is where women create the margin to get away with behaviors conducive to infidelity. Is going to lunch with Kevin and Sales flirtatious behavior? Or is it just being cordial with a colleague? Is joking around with Dave, the unemployed garage band guitar player, who may or may not live in a storage unit, flirtatious behavior? Or is it harmless fun? Is texting back and forth with her ex-boyfriend Chris about the good old days flirting? Or is it just reminiscing about the past? Now, any man watching this knows the answer to all three of those scenarios. Of course it's flirting, but women who are watching would say, well, maybe her and Kevin are just good friends and like having lunch together. Or there's nothing wrong with joking around with a male friend. Or he's an ex-boyfriend for a reason, so there's nothing for you to worry about if we're just texting. What gives women permission to use these tactics is the highly subjective definition of flirtatious behavior here in 2020. 60 years ago, married women didn't go to lunch with persons of the opposite sex that they weren't married to, they didn't show parts of their bodies to men other than their husbands, and keeping in contact with her exes were completely out of the question. So why are behaviors that were clearly seen as flirtatious back then considered to be harmless and friendly today? There are obviously many answers, but the biggest culprit in terms of normalizing behaviors that threaten relationships is the subjectivity with which this conduct is viewed in this day and age. Now, women know damn well what flirting is and what it's not, but they feign ignorance to escape accountability and to give themselves permission to continue engaging in this activity. Okay, Donovan, since you're such an expert, why can't you define what flirting is? I can't define what flirting is, but like Supreme Court Justice Porter Stewart so eloquently put, I know it when I see it. Which brings me to today's Reddit post entitled, quote, Wife talking a lot about male coworker. It was submitted by a newlywed whose Reddit handle is bowconstrictor, and it can be found at r slash relationship underscore advice. You guys know I normally break down and analyze videos and articles, but when someone is telling a story under the cloak of anonymity, 
They give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I've always stated that if a man has any doubts about whether what I discuss on my channel is true, he can do two things to eradicate his doubt. He can either become a taxi or Uber driver, or he can go to Reddit. And since I'm not going to be an Uber driver anytime soon, God willing, I'm going to do the next best thing and go to Reddit. And by the way, Relationship Reddit, Relationship Advice Reddit, 2X Chromosomes Reddit is a treasure trove of female nature on full display for all the world to see. So let's get started here and break this bad boy down. He starts, quote, I'm a newly married man. My wife is amazing and is always expressing how much she cares for me. That said, she's been talking a lot about a male coworker. In fact, every day she brings up something he has said she finds funny. Additionally, they have made jokes that could be considered inappropriate. For example, she spilled queso on her pants and she made a premature E-word joke about him. That said, she makes jokes like this to a lot of people, including female strangers. I have no idea if I'm being paranoid or if I should confront this. My last wife cheated on me, he said, so I absolutely could be overreacting to this. That said, I don't know if I'm trying to convince myself this is nothing or if I should tell her I feel she's crossing boundaries. Thank you for your advice. Okay, let's take this from the top here. First off, he's putting his wife on a pedestal for simply being a woman and expressing how much she cares about him, and he's doing it all wrong here, guys. What today's men need to understand is that women are not amazing simply because they have female anatomy. Too many men put women on a pedestal because they're attracted to them, and as we all know, this is always a big mistake. Bow Constrictor, if you're watching this, your wife isn't amazing, because if she were, she wouldn't be making jokes about premature E-word with a male coworker. In the next paragraph, he talks about the fact that his wife talks about this dude every day and brings up things he says that she finds funny. Bo, I hate to break this to you, man, but your wife is either thinking about cheating, about to cheat, or is already cheating with that dude. When a man gives a woman tingles, they cannot keep it to themselves. They are incapable of doing so. Yes, there are some who are good at keeping their feelings of carnal attraction from their significant others, but these are the borderline personality disorder and dark triad females of the world. But by and large, most women cannot hide their attraction for another man from their husbands. Now, they think they can by making what they believe is innocuous conversation about a random coworker. But gentlemen, listen to what I'm about to tell you and listen good. The very first time your wife or girlfriend brings up anything a male coworker did or said outside of the scope of work even one time, trust me when I tell you that guy is on her radar. Guaranteed. Women don't bring this stuff up for no reason, guys. It's an involuntary response. But for men like Bo Constrictor, who doesn't have the kind of awareness he needs, he doesn't see the situation for what it really is, which is his wife is having or is about to have an affair with her male coworker. If your wife or girlfriend mentions a male coworker even one time, start the countdown to when she tearfully admits to you that she's been having an affair with this guy. Bo, your wife thinks he's funny and she's telling you about it. She is literally telling you, hey, I'm about to cheat on you with this guy, but because you have no idea how to recognize this kind of behavior, you're about to get got. Then in the next paragraph, he talks about joking around about premature E-word about him. What? Your wife is joking about another man's premature release? Bo, did it ever occur to you to ask yourself or her, how the hell do you know about his premature release issues? Well, there are a couple of answers here. Number one, they have conversations about fooling around. B, they are fooling around, or C, they're having conversations about fooling around. Guess what, Bo? None of these is appropriate. And lying to us by saying she jokes like this with a lot of people, including female strangers, is pathetically transparent. Where's your post about her making jokes with those people? Why aren't you concerned about them? Oh, I know. They don't exist. You guys, Bo Constrictor knows this is inappropriate behavior. But because he doesn't have the testicular fortitude to call out his wife, he's looking for a back door to slip through when the truth becomes obvious. Well, she jokes like this with everybody, he tells himself. It doesn't mean anything. He told Reddit that she jokes like this with everybody, so that Reddit can tell him what he wants to hear, which is not to worry about it. It's nothing. Bo doesn't want advice. He wants permission to bury his head in the sand and remain blind to his wife's impending affair with her male coworker. Now, his last paragraph really puts the nail in the coffin when he tells us that his last wife cheated on him, which tells us a few things. Number one, his last wife did not love or respect him enough to remove herself from situations conducive to cheating. And number two, and most importantly, he told his current wife his last wife cheated on him, which is always a mistake. Why is this a mistake? because it gravely compromised her attraction to him, which is exactly why she's looking to get with her coworker. 
You see, guys, women lose respect for men they know have been cheated on. When they find out a woman betrayed him in the worst way possible, women ask themselves questions like, what's wrong with him? How could he let that happen? Is there something I don't know about him? Is this the first time she cheated or the first time she got caught? Why did she cheat? Does he have a small sausage? Is he a mama's boy? Bo's wife asked herself these same things. And regardless of what he told her, her husband is inherently flawed in her mind because another woman misbehaved in the worst way on his watch. A man that gets disrespected by women the way Bo's ex-wife disrespected him lose the respect of other women, including ones like his wife, which again explains her behavior. So Bo Constrictor, if you're watching this, my advice to you is twofold. Number one, do not tell women you're dating that you've been cheated on by other women. That doesn't do you any favors and that doesn't guarantee they won't cheat. Now, they may empathize with you and even sympathize with you, but sympathy is not something you want or need from a woman. Being an open book with women about women who have cheated on you is making them lose respect for you. Stop it. And number two, start the countdown to your wife serving you with divorce papers because once this behavior starts, it never stops. You can confront her all you want to, but all she's going to do is deny it. Then you know what's going to happen? She'll never mention him to you again because she now knows you're on to her. She's going to start working later. She's going to be taking her phone into the bathroom with her. She's going to be running errands on the weekend. And all of a sudden, she's going to be going to weekend conferences and workshops out of town. I hate to break it to you, Bo, but your marriage is already over. Next time, take more time to vet her. Take more time to train her and set and establish boundaries. And you'll reduce the odds of this happening to you for a third time. And if you're wondering how and where you can learn to do these things, I would highly recommend my five-part, seven-hour audio course, how to build a quality of woman from the ground up. Shoot me an email at tsr at donovansharp.com and I will send it to you, Bo Constrictor, at no charge. Hope to hear from you, Bo. I mean it.